A couple of years ago, I did a video on the best budget portrait lenses for your Sony a6000. I decided to update this video for 2020 by giving you guys my top five favorite portrait lenses for your Sony a6000 or a6100 or a63 or a64 or a65 or a66, any Sony APS-C mirrorless censored camera. So let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm gonna make this video nice and simple by just going through one through five, my favorite lenses, and then talk about a couple of points on each one of them. Number one on my list, the lens that I recommend more than any other lens that I've ever tried over the last four or five years, the Sigma 56 millimeter F 1.4. Now, if you are surprised by that, then you probably haven't watched a lot of my videos, but I have talked about this lens a lot. I've done a ton of different comparisons between this lens and other lenses. In my opinion, it's the sharpest lens that you can get for your Sony mirrorless APS-C camera. So a couple of talking points on this lens. It's super duper compact, it's lightweight. However, it's built very well. It has a very premium feel. This lens is made in Japan and you can see the attention to detail just by holding it in your hand. This lens is unbelievably sharp. Now I've compared this to the Sony 50 millimeter F 1.8. The Sigma 56 was sharper. I compared it to the Zeiss 55mm f1.8. The Sigma was sharper. I compared this to the Sigma 60mm f2.8. The Sigma 56mm was sharper. I compared this to the Sony 16-55 to walk around zoom lens, the constant f2.8, and this Sigma 56 was sharper. In every single situation where I've put this lens up against another opponent, it has been the better lens, the sharper lens, and in most cases, also the cheaper lens. What's truly remarkable about the Sigma 56 is not only the fact that it's a very sharp lens, but it's very sharp wide open at f1.4. In fact, the majority of my shots with this lens, 90% of them, were done at f1.4. A lot of lenses are not sharp wide open. The Sigma 56 is not one of those. In addition to sharpness, the bokeh that you get with this lens, especially at f1.4, is amazing. Super duper creamy, super nice. There's a nice bit of subject separation, so for portrait work, you really cannot go wrong with this lens. The autofocus on this lens is silent, quick, and accurate. I would say it's up there with any native Sony lens. Last but not least, because of the fast aperture at f1.4, this lens is amazing in low light. It truly is incredible and for the price of around $400, in many cases less than $400, you honestly cannot pick out a better portrait lens than the Sigma 56. I've recommended this lens to a ton of people and the feedback that I've received has been nothing but positive. Before I move on to the second lens in my top five, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and people who are just curious. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in the world of creativity. There are classes in illustration, graphic design, photography, film and video, and more. As an example, just this week I took a class called Design Great Stuff How to Make Merch with Draplin by Aaron Draplin. Not only was this class inspirational, it was very hands-on and practical. I feel like I could go out and design merch right now if I wanted to. I might. That's just one example of the thousands of creative classes available on Skillshare. And it's also very cost effective because with the annual plan, it's less than $10 per month. And in fact, because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first thousand subscribers that use the link down in the description below will get a free two month trial of premium membership so you can get started in your creative journey. So definitely check it out down below and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to my top five portrait lenses. The Sigma 56 is number one on my list. Number two might be a surprise. It is the Sony 85 millimeter F 1.8 which is the only full frame lens out of my top five list. The Sony 85 millimeter, like the Sigma 56, is a very well-constructed lens. It's light, it's very compact for an 85 millimeter lens, especially given the fact that it is a full frame lens and those tend to be a little bit bigger than APS-C lenses. Even given that, it does not look out of place on an APS-C camera body. This lens features autofocus that is fast, super accurate, and silent. Wide open, the Sony 85 millimeter is nice and sharp. In fact, I've never done a side-by-side -side comparison between the 85 and the Sigma 56, but 
I did take three sample images of my wife and here are the results. Surprisingly, shooting both of these lenses wide open, so f1.4 versus f1.8, as I zoom into my wife's face, you can see that the Sigma 56 is a sharper lens out of the two. When I stop the Sigma lens down to f1.8 and compare it to the Sony 85 wide open at f1.8, again, the Sigma 56 is just a touch sharper. When I step both of these lenses down to f2.8, the result is the same. Both lenses I would describe as sharp, but the Sigma 56 is just a touch sharper. Now that's not a knock on the Sony 85 millimeter by any means, because this is still a very sharp lens and you can create some amazing portraits with it, especially given that this is an 85 millimeter lens. It gives you that extra little bit of subject separation because the equivalent focal length on a full frame camera is roughly 130 millimeters or so. So this is a pretty telephoto portrait lens. You do have to step back from your subject quite a bit more than with the Sigma 56, but the results are pretty astonishing. You get nice and creamy background bouquet, excellent colors and very little distortion. Now, because this is a full frame lens, some may argue that you are giving up some lines of resolution because your APS-C sensor is only using the center of that large circular diameter cutout on the back of the lens. But for me personally, that is a non-issue. I use this lens on my APC cameras to this day all the time, and the results are amazing. So it might not be for everyone, but for me, it's an excellent portrait lens. That's why it's my number two. Number three on the list might come as a surprise because it's the only non-prime lens out of my top five, and that is the Sony 16 to 55 f2.8. And I know, I know, it's expensive, uh, but this is one of the few walk around lenses that I think can do an amazing job as a portrait lens as well. When it comes to portraits, there are primarily two problems with using zoom lenses. Number one, they aren't normally very fast. So you take the Zeiss 16 to 70, for example, it's a constant F4, which is fine, but it's not exactly great in low light situations. It's also not great for creating that blurry background that you want with good portraits. Number two is most lenses that are walk around zooms, or at least a lot of them, in particular the Zeiss 16 to 70 suffers from this, kind of falls apart at the telephoto side. So at 70 millimeters, that Zeiss is terribly not sharp. Both of those issues are non-existent with the Sony 16 to 55 f2.8 because number one, f2.8 is fast. It's fast enough for portrait work. It gives you nice creamy background bouquet. And number two, this lens is tack sharp at the extreme of 55 millimeters. Overall, the Sony 16 to 55 is a very premium feeling, very well built lens from Sony. It is part of their G line of lenses. It features a blazing fast, very accurate and silent linear motor autofocusing system. In my opinion, to this date, I've never used a lens with better autofocus than the 16 to 55 f2.8. The distortion on this lens is very well controlled. The color reproduction is very accurate, but beyond all of that, it is just tack sharp across the frame and across all of the focal length. So at 16 millimeters, it's nice and sharp. At 30 millimeters, nice and sharp. 45 millimeters, nice and sharp. 55 millimeters, it's nice and sharp. This is the do-it-all lens. This lens can easily replace a handful of primes in your camera bag. And for that reason, I think the price is very high, but you can easily justify it because it is one of the best, no, it is the best zoom walk around lens that I've ever tried on an APS-C mirrorless camera. My number four recommendation for best portrait lenses is a lens that I don't have in front of me because it's a little bit redundant with my current lens collection, but I will talk about it in this video. Don't worry, this is just a placeholder. Anyway, that lens is the Sigma 60 millimeter F2.8, which I've bought and sold several times now. And this pick might come as a surprise for those of you who watched my original portrait lens video, because in that video, I picked the Sony 50 millimeter F1.8 as the best lens. But since then, I've had multiple opportunities to use both lenses and I've kind of changed my mind. The Sigma 60 millimeter F2.8 is a compact, well-built prime lens. It is the predecessor to my number one pick, the Sigma 56. In fact, I compared the Sigma 60 to the Sigma 56, and I found that with the Sigma 60 millimeter, you were getting 90% of the Sigma 56's sharpness at about half the price. When it comes to value for dollar, you cannot do any better than the Sigma 60 millimeter in my opinion. There are a couple of compromises that you do have to deal with though. Number one, it's 
f2.8. So you do not get that super nice creamy shallow depth of field that you would with an f1.4 or even an f1.8 lens. And also f2.8 is just not as good in low light situations. So there's a compromise there. The second compromise is the autofocusing system is simply not as quick, not as accurate as what you get with the newer line of Sigmas, in particular the Sigma 56 f1.4 like I mentioned. Especially when it comes to eye autofocus on the newer camera bodies such as the a6100, it didn't lock on to the eye as effectively, as quickly, and as often as what I got with the Sigma 56. So you do have to factor that in your decision. Number five on my list of top five portrait lenses for your Sony APS-C camera. Also a lens that I no longer have with me because I have all of these other portrait lenses, but it is the Seven Artisans 55mm f1.4. This is the cheapest lens out of the group. It is, however, the only manual lens. So you do have to manually focus this lens. It does not have any autofocus whatsoever. The Seven Artisans 55 millimeter is just a cool lens to use. It's built like a tank. It's very heavy, made out of glass and metal. The manual focus ring is perfect, so it makes nailing focus quite easy. And the results you get with this lens speak for themselves. Nice and sharp in the center, the corners leave something to be desired. But if you're just taking portraits and your subject stays in the center of the frame, even wide open at f1.4, you get great results. As far as shortcomings, there are three. It's the least sharp lens out of this group. There is a ton of chromatic aberration, especially wide open at f1.4, and this lens suffers from extreme flaring. But for $100 or around $110, you honestly cannot beat it for a great cheap portrait lens, especially if you're just getting into the hobby, if you just have an A6000 and you're looking at a cheap portrait lens and you wanna experiment with manual focus, the Seven Artisans 55 f1.4 is definitely a lens that I would recommend. So that is it for my top five list. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of my picks for best portrait lenses. Did I miss anything? Did I leave out any lens? And let me know also which is your favorite out of my top five. Always curious to read your comments. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. As usual, I will have links down below in the description so you can check out pricing, check out specs, and purchase any one of the lenses that I recommended in this video. Thank you guys so much for all of your comments, all of your likes, and your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.